What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny for real, whatever you want to call it. I know this is an episode you've been waiting for because a lot of things happened in the NBA world today, and y'all want me to react. We had a 50-point game. We saw Damian Lee call game against my favorite team. The Bucks lost by double digits to the Knicks. The Cavs' sex land beat up on Philly. And I think those were the four big things. Um, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I'm giving all my NBA opinions in today's video, as every video. You may disagree. That's completely, completely okay. Let's start off with the first game of the day. Y'all were tweeting me and, and hitting me up on Instagram. We need a Kenny Friel video ASAP about the Clippers losing by 50. Not 30. Not 25. Not even 40. They lost by 50. And it's inexcusable. It is embarrassing for any NBA team, but specifically a team that's trying to win a championship to lose by 50. Now, I understand Kawhi was out, but it's not like the Dallas Mavericks ain't missing one of their best players, too. Losing by 50 is inexcusable. Somebody fact check this. But the worst team in basketball, in my mind, was that team. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets fans. Um, but I guess they were the Bobcats back then. The team that was tanking for Anthony Davis, I think they won seven games in a shortened lockout season, right? They ended up with the second overall pick and took Michael K. Gilchrist, but they were the worst team I've ever visually watched play basketball. I don't know off the top of my head if they ever lost by 50. The worst team in basketball. So it is inexcusable, and it should never happen again. But what do you, what do you want me to say? I'm not going to be a guy that's going to be out there overreacting to the fact that they lost by 50 points. I'm not going to come in here and talk about, this is why they'll lose in the second round, because the third regular season game of the season, they lost by 50. I, I, that's not me. I'm not going to say that Serge Ibaka was a bad signing because he airballed a few times today. That's just not who I am. And it's, again, it is inexcusable, but I'm not going to be the guy that's trying to dissect this third regular season game and act like this is going to be the trajectory of this team when, A, their best player was missing, and it was just the third regular season game of the season. Two, the first two games of the season, they were look dominant, literally dominant. And today they look like absolute trash. They look worse than a G League team. They look like a JV team going against an NBA team. But I'm not going to ignore the fact that the first two games they were really good and be like, this is the game that determines that they're no longer a contender. I'm sorry. I'm, th this is not the channel you come to for overreactions like that. That's just not who I am. So I'm sorry. I'm happy that the Dallas Mavericks had the first win of the season. They deserve this one. I like that they did to take their foot off the, the gas pedal because we see a lot of times, like, again, my Bulls were down by 40 the other night and um the opposing coach were like okay the starters could come out for the last fourth quarter and then we still be having our starters in and stuff and then we we look we turn that 40 point game to a 20 point game so it don't look too bad dallas Mavericks like nah we keeping our foot on the pedal even with our bench players and anytime my boy tyrell terry could get some minutes i'm excited to watch him play i'm sorry this ain't the reaction that some of y'all were expecting but i'm not about to overly dissect and analyze just random third game of the season where they lost by a lot of points let's get to some of the other games and i'm going to quickly go through these next two the charlotte hornets beat the nets so it turns out they are not invincible they won't be going 72 and 0 because today was the day that gordon hayward showed why he was paid all that money because he was he was lights out man and gordon hayward is always going to be a guy for the most part he's going to be super efficient on the season that's just who he is as a player um but he looked like the leader of this team of course they're missing their starting center and um biz biz mac is just not very good there's a reason why he's a backup center nowadays, and there's a reason why he didn't have that much of a market going into the offseason. Uh, but they won this game. You know, they won this game. I'm hoping that Spencer Dinwiddie's okay. I've been riding with Spencer Dinwiddie for such a long time. Quick story time before we get to the next game. Spencer Dinwiddie used to play for the Windy City Bulls here in Chicago. And I used to go to Windy City Bulls games because, well, they're a lot cheaper than the Chicago Bulls games. And I used to be very, very broke. Um, and I went to one of his games, he played very well, and then they released him a couple weeks later. And I remember making a tweet that was like, man, the Bulls just lost out on a good one and added Spencer Dinwiddie, and he liked the tweet. And since that moment, I've been a Spencer Dinwiddie fan, and I was absolutely right. I mean, we're talking about a guy that averaged 20 points per game last season and is now a starting guard on a championship-quality team. So shout out to Spencer Dinwiddie. Um, maybe by the time this video is out, we have a, a little diagnosis and a timetable of him, but I hope he doesn't miss any significant time. Shout out to the Hornets for getting their first win of the season. Next game. Talk about the worst fourth quarter team in basketball. Ah, you know what? It's, it's a toss-up. It's a coin flip between the Chicago Bulls and the Washington Wizards for being the worst fourth quarter team in basketball. Today, what makes them the worst? They blew a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter. Markel Fultz looked like he was playing at Washington. The reason he was the first overall pick. Um, Washington? Yes, Washington, not Washington State. The way I determine it is like thinking about the color of the jerseys. And Washington was a place. I mean, I don't know what Steve Clifford said to this team in that huddle to get them from being absolutely terrible in the third quarter to be in the fourth quarter gods. Um, but Markel did his thing, man. 20-plus points. 
and his defense was good. Um, and then the Wizards just fell apart. And I don't want to, similar to what I said earlier, I'm not trying to dissect them because they were missing Russell Westbrook, who set out today because of rest or whatever the reason may be. Um, but they blew this game. And the defense looked terrible. In that fourth quarter specifically, the defense looked terrible. And me and my guys were just talking trash about Raw NATO in a joking way. Because people hear me say I'm, I'm talking trash, think I'm being disrespectful. But like in a little joking way, where's Raw NATO playing? And he was starting in this game and he put up a dub. You know what I'm saying? The Wizards have the, the, the pieces to be a playoff team this year for sure. They got to put it together. They got to figure out how to close out games because they, they have not been able to do that so far this season. Um, the next quickie is with the Spurs and the Pelicans. Um, I was watching this game, and then at the end of it, a- after every game, I'm looking at the box score to see if there's anything I missed. And Keldon Johnson, I definitely expected Keldon Johnson to have shot t- more than two free throws. The boy be going to the rim and not getting any calls, I guess. i definitely be seeing him draw a hella contact, and he never gets it. Um, but this is a game that, that what hurt them the most in this one is there was the, the, um, the five-point play five point play for the Pelicans, obviously, in a game that you lose by three, the five-point play is probably the most important one. Zion making big plays, getting a lot of rebounds. And Brandon Ingram is the guy, 28-11. and 11. And I was listening to him on J.J. Reddick's podcast. And, of course, J.J. Reddick's going to say positive things about him because they're teammates. But uh, he was saying something along the lines of, like, Brandon Ingram's playmaking is so much better than y'all give him credit for. And when you really think about it and you really watch them play, you see that. Um, I, the one the one thing about this team, just the spacing is still really, really bad, bro. There's times where, like, Zion is trying to work down low and Steven Adams is sitting at the, like, elbow. He's sitting at the free throw line. And if I'm the opposing team, why the hell would I why, – why would I guard Steven Adams right there? You know what I'm saying? When have he ever done that? So that's something they got to figure out. Oh, and please get Steven Adams some backup. I know you want to play your young guy because you drafted him in the lottery last year, but Jackson Hayes just ain't ready. He ain't he ain't ready just yet. And lo- I mean, luckily it didn't cost him. But whenever he was on the court, I just felt like it was free cheese. It was just free cheese. Let's talk about sex land. People are really not upset, but they were confused about the sex land. Do you not get it? Colin Sexton and Darius Garland put it together as sex land. And um, we're all living in sex land right now because another very convincing win that was uh, drumming. I was talking trash about him saying he don't know his role. He don't know who he is. Today, without Joel B being there, he played well. And I love to watch Joel versus Drummond because obviously Joel is top of the class when it comes to centers. And Drummond is good, but he thinks he's also top of the class when it comes to center. And they go at it, and usually Joel B wins. But without Joel B, that, that, uh, similar to like I said with the other ones, one of my star players is sitting out. I'm not going to overreact to what happened. The, the, the Cavaliers look good when when I saw the starting lineup, I thought they were going to lose. The fact that Larry Nance was running small forward, it reminded me of his dad uh, because his dad was definitely a power forward but played a lot of small forward minutes back in the day. So it definitely reminded me of that. And he held his own defensively. Like you would think a guy of his size with not a lot of foot speed would get toe up at the small forward position. Nope, did his thing, held his own. And no Isaac Okoro, and they look fine. Jetty Osmond is a really good uh, player off the bench. He just is. I'm excited to see this young core of guys continue to grow, and I'm still waiting for the moment. I'm still, still waiting for the moment where we get um, Kevin Porter Jr. I don't know what he is doing or what's going on with him. He posted on Instagram, and his fit was fire, but I don't even – do I be seeing him on the sideline? I don't remember seeing him on the sideline. So hopefully somebody in the comment section can let me know what's going on with, with my guy because I – I going back to last year, out of all of their prospects, he was the one that I was most excited for, and he hasn't played so far this season, and I haven't cared enough to Google why he's not playing, but I hope he's doing fine because I know he has some stuff going on in the offseason. The next game, full strength Bucks lose by 20 to the New York Knicks. I hate to say that the Knicks are better than the Bulls. In what world? If you look at the Bulls and the Knicks on paper, me and my boy Pierre were just talking about this, you would say that the Bulls should be 10 times better than the Knicks, but I guess not. I guess not. Uh, my boy Bucks was t- tweeting at me that if the Bulls want to go all in for K Cunningham, they need to just go in and get Pat Connaughton because Pat Connaughton be selling. Um, I did not watch this game, though, so I don't have anything to say except for I guess Alfred Payton turned into some Gary Payton or something. Um, Sabonis and the Indiana Pacers look really, really good through three games. Um, they're just the forgotten team out east, and I'm guilty of this as well when it comes to the Eastern Conference because I know that they're always going to be good enough to make the playoffs, but it's always a question of are they good enough to make it to the second round, and if they are good enough to make it to the second round, are they good enough to make it to the conference finals? And I don't know the answer to that question just yet, but through three games, Sabonis has looked really good. Malcolm Brogdon is doing the same thing he kind of did last year. Well, he'll probably be into all-star conversations going into the all-star break. If you did not know 
because I said this in a video, and people are like, Kenny, there is no All-Star. There's no All-Star game, but there's still an All-Star break. They're still going to announce All-Stars. It'll still be on players' resume. We just won't get an actual game this season which is unfortunate for Indian, Indiana, Indianapolis because it was supposed to be in their city this season. And maybe that would have gave Malcolm Brogdon a little bit of a little boost. Um, but he's been looking really, really good this season. Jason Tatum um, is a great, tough shot taker and maker. But if he's not making the tough shots, it can be kind of frustrating to watch. I can't say bad shot because I've seen him make it before, but when he's not making them, it's just rough to watch. And we know that JT is that guy, but you get hopefully you understand what I'm saying because when he's making them, it's a beauty to watch. But when he's missing, it's kind of rough. Um, but the moment you've been waiting for in the last game we're going to talk about today is my Bulls losing to the Warriors. Um, there's some promising stuff from my Chicago Bulls, 100%. But this, this is the way I think about it. The Warriors, through the first two games of the season, they look like the worst team in basketball, other than us, obviously. Um, and then I, Steph Curry hit 105, 103 threes in a row in the Bulls practice facility, and I knew he was going to have a good game. If you look at 11 for 25 and 5 for 15 from three, you would think that he wasn't that man, but pff, you'd be wrong. Watching the entirety of this game, Stephen Curry looked like an MVP player again. It's crazy that we lost this game with, with – Kelly Oubre still hasn't hit a jump shot through three games. He's a player that played a total of 30 minutes for them this game, and he didn't hit a single jump shot, and we lost. Wiggins did not look good, and we lost. Juan Toscano started for them, didn't do anything, and we lost. Now, I'm giving a lot of credit to Damian Lee because he hit a very tough shot to call game, but at the end of the day, we lost to Steph Curry, and sub-tier role players. And it's sad because when you think about Wendell Carter hit his best game as a bull this season. Literally. 22 and 13. Wow. He hasn't done that all season. Zach Levine had his best game of the season, putting up 30. Kobe White didn't have his best game, but he still put up 20. And Laurie Marketing also put up 20. And we lost. Like you can't ask for much more from our core four. And we lost. You know what I'm saying? Otto Porter had a good game. And we lost. So I don't know what this means for the Chicago Bulls. Again, I didn't expect us to be a good team this season. And and maybe this is a blessing in disguise because – and maybe I'm overreacting, but I, this th- there's a significant problem with this core group of guys, and it doesn't mean that one guy sucks or this or that. They just don't work well together. Um, because defensively, there's just not a high IQ defensive player on the team right now. Um, Wendell Carter had that reputation through the first couple game, years of his career, but this season he just hasn't been good so far. The, again, only three games, so I don't want to go overly dramatic about it. But like in our starting five, Patrick Williams might be our best defender, and he's three games into his NBA career. And I, I think that's what us Bulls fans got to realize, that this is probably a trend. 99% this is a transition year for us. We have a new front office, a new coach. This is not the team that Ack put together. We're probably going to see this Bulls team make trades at the trade deadline. We're probably going to see this team make trades once the offseason comes around. So I'm going to take, and just again, I'm going to do the same thing Ack is probably doing. Look at what we have now and try to figure out which of these players do we actually want to keep on the roster long term. I think that's what those Bulls fans should be looking at. And when the shot went up, I wasn't like super mad. You know, I went onto Twitter and I was like paying only paying. But us winning this game didn't, they literally wouldn't have done anything. You know what I'm saying? Take it for Cade, baby. Cade, come save Chicago. And for the Warriors, it's good for them to get their first win. I was hoping that we would get to see Draymond Green tonight, but he's he set out. Um, Steph Curry, again, I'm happy that he got on the right foot, and maybe this is a turn in the right direction for him. He needs his surrounding players to shoot the ball and shoot the ball. Hit hit a shot, Kelly. Hit a damn shot. 